In this tutorial, we will explain what freight fixtures and rates are for voyage charters. We have two tutorials in this unit. Both focus on freight fixtures and rates. We will explain what freight fixtures and freight rates are, but the first one focuses on voyage charter and the second one on time charter that we have explained in our learning. The Freight Voids Charter Fixtures and Rates Spreadsheet has three sheets. There are two different sizes of ships, and these are different fixtures. As you can see in the sheet Cape Size Voyage Charter Fixtures, the data that has been included is from 2021, and the columns that we have here represent the date of the fixture, or the appointment of the ship or agreement. And this is the name of the ship and in some cases it will be announced. It is unknown. In other cases the ships are known. In these unknown cases the ships are nominated. The fixture is done. The agreement has been completed with a specific charterer. But the ship has not been nominated yet. It will be nominated at that time. When the ship was built, some information is missing, as we would expect, and the quantity that it has been fixed for. This does not represent the size of the ship. It represents the cargo that will be transported on the ship. This is a capesized ship, which is the largest type of dry bulk carrier. The example we focused on in our lectures was coal. If we filter the data here, we can see that this is the coal. We can filter the data to find all the relevant information that we want to focus on. This is the charterer that has the cargo and the ship owner at the end, who owns the ship. These are the periods of time that the ship owner needs to present the ship, called the Laycan dates the latest date and the cancellation date. The ship owner must prevent the ship between, for example here, the 22nd and the 26th, otherwise the charterer can cancel the contract. Where it is going to load, where it will discharge, and now we come to the important part, which is how much. This is a voyage charter, so the values here are in dollars per tonne. Now let's have a look just to make sure. This is a good example here. We have dollars per day, so even though voyage charters are always dollars per tonne, this is a trip charter here, where we have dollars per day, which is similar to a time charter, but it is not a time charter, because it is not for a longer period of time. It is for a voyage and the payment is per day. The rates here are dollars per tonne of cargo. We can multiply this value by the quantity of the cargo that needs to be transported, and we get an idea of the revenue. We need to take out the commission of the broker, which is normally around 2.5%, and that will give you your revenue before your costs. The second sheet is exactly the same, but for a different type of ship, which is Panamax, a smaller size, and you can see the dead weight of the ship is represented here. You can see that it is loading at near capacity of the ship, and in some cases it will have a bit more capacity or load less. It is Panamax, and as you can see the sizes are much smaller. Finally, what we want to show is the freight rates. These are averages for specific routes. Loading from Richards Bay and discharging at Rotterdam. That is the description of the route. And this is the size of that ship which is 165,000 deadweight tonnes. And it is carrying coal on this route. Cape size voyage and the rates and again it gives you an idea 
of the volatility and the level of the rates over time. We are comparing these two sizes. The larger cape size is blue and the red, which is a Panamax. And you can see the freight rates fluctuate and they tend to move slightly differently with more volatility and cape size compared to Panamax. In this tutorial, you have seen data of voyage charters and in the next tutorial, you will see the difference between voyage charter and time charter.